This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, it's Jared Morgan. Hello, everyone. How's it going? It's been uh, a while. It has been a while, and uh, uh, we apologize. We tried to clear up Jared's uh, image quality, but uh, I'm going to blame my internet again. <laughs> yeah, the, the the internet, the pipes are clogged between Australia and uh, the US yeah. West Coast at the moment. I will count it so. as a win if uh, for once we don't have Jared freeze midway through the uh, podcast and can hear him the entire time. <laughs> Look, if, if that happens to work this time around i'll be very surprised <laughs> but you know we'll see i i just i was sitting there looking at the bottom of the screen as well to your image there and uh yes w- i'm sorry the tweety bird will stay i am not going to x sorry i'm on twitter you're not gonna exit no yeah no. that's it right it just looks like a tools thing just let me have it the... does, yeah it does you know it looks like um the the logo for for twitter x looks like the dev tools for um xcode on apple computers i look at it every single time oh. i go that looks like xcode okay toolset. i'm like i have no idea what that is so <laughs> no but just trust me it does anyone who's yeah. a nerd and he does development on mac will know exactly what i'm talking about yeah um let's see what's going on <clears throat> uh with you jared uh well yeah the reason why we didn't really record last week or last fortnight because i was um, under the weather and it turns out that i had influenza a with a nice side of pneumonia yeah so that was fun <laughs> that was good fun uh but yeah I'm, I'm heaps better now um it's mostly cleared up so that's that's nice i'm feeling some degree of normal again um so yeah that was sort of like my last fortnight really feeling pretty rubbish and, and it's essentially summer still for you guys right no, it's it's towards the end of summer okay. and it's into autumn now. Okay. Uh, yeah. All but, the yeah, same. The, not when you normally think you'd be getting a cold, but <laughs> no, influenza A in particular. This they have this particularly horrible version of pneumonia called um, um, myco something or other. Uh, it's M dot pneumonia, hmm. um, and it's it's every it was everywhere when I contracted it. Wow. Everyone was suffering from it. Like teams at work were all down with it. So, yeah, it seems to be an early flu that's um, going around. So, okay. yeah, it's not fun at yeah. all. Um, uh, I've been tinkering. You might notice the new um, backdrop that I've got here. Oh, wait, what? It's not virtual. Hey, wait a second. There's there's a shelving unit there. With, yeah, I've got shelving there. I've got things. With toys. Lego. I see a Lego Voltron. <laughs> uh, there's a Lego Voltron in pieces, and there's also a... Um, uh, an Optimus Prime on the top. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a couple of um, Chinese knockoff Lego sets, being the "This is fine" meme, yes, which is my, which is necessary, uh, in a portal gun from Rick and Morty, and then there's Bimo down the bottom, keeping the other two uh, Voltron lines happy. And then just, uh, just being obstructed by my mic, um, is, uh, oh, <laughs> looks like a spider. <laughs> Uh, so it is the um, the the name of which I always forget, but those horrible black things that are in Matrix. Oh, um, okay. That, Sentinels that uh, go and Sentinels. Yeah, it's a Sentinel. Hmm. So yeah, so yeah, I thought I'd just put it there because the the corner was boring and it hides the uh, drum kit um, computer behind me. So <laughs> um, ah, yeah. hitting the wrong buttons. There we go. Um, yeah. All right. I have been. Uh, tinkering with 8-Ball Deluxe and trying to record video for it and bashing my head against the wall because I'm not solving anything and and I don't want to make a video until I've actually come up with a solution. Um, Jared took a... But you're clueless about repair. I am clueless about repair, but that doesn't make for a good video if you don't actually, you know, come out with a win at some point. (laughs) Um, Yeah. The... The things that I'm battling against... Well, actually, I, I'm going to tell you the one thing that I solved today, and I was just kind of laughing. It's total bad hack. Um, but what I've been dealing with is my lights that aren't coming on, which I've managed to get everything on except for one light. Um, it's my number nine ball, and I know it's not the socket or the wiring because if I move the entire pin configuration down one notch, that light comes on. So I'm like, okay... It's got to be on the board. That's, I mean, would that make, that would be your assessment, right, Jared? 
if uh, yeah, if it's if it's if you move the entire connector one positive. slot down, and then that light comes on, that means it's not the socket, it's not the wiring. It's got to be. Yeah. It's not the pins. Well, it's got to be the pin on the board, I would think. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So that's why I, in the comments, I think I'm the only one who commented on the video yeah. <laughs> um, extensively. But I used I used the video as like a, oh, this is my my diagnostic tips for you. Yeah. Um, to try and work around that. And I think really that era of belly board, and it was the same with the Paragon I got downstairs. Um, I know this because I had some really weird lamp issues as well where, where two lamps were coming on at the wrong time and it was all very strange i thought the, the most simplest thing that causes this is just dirty dirty or oxidized terminals so i got in there with some 400 grit sandpaper and just burnished all of the pins back to pretty much like um raw metal um and and then put the connectors back in and lo and behold, everything worked flawlessly and all the lights were nice and bright and I didn't have any more logic issues. And so, yeah, it was just dirty pins and that's an easy and inexpensive fix to do. I did uh, take some sandpaper. Now, granted, it was a thousand grit because my choices were either 250 grit or a thousand grit. <laughs> um, a thousand's fine. A thousand's and uh, good. I gave him a good floss. Yeah, I'm still same problem. Yeah. Um, so mm, okay. And now Jared's also seen the back of my uh, lamp driver board, and they're not the shiniest of soldering points. <laughs> they, they, I mean, they, they don't need to be shiny. They just need to be um, air gap free. And I noticed that some of the ones on the back there, based on what I saw in the photo, yeah, looks like there's some. Um, they look a little bit cold. Yeah, and what they call cold joints, where it's not not a f nice. Um, bubble of solder over the um, no. the pins as like air gaps, so reflowing those would be the first thing I do next. Yep. Um, and honestly, you don't need fancy tools to do that. You can just get a, a low wattage soldering iron and um and just go and reflow those um those pads, and you should be that 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 would be the next thing to rule out when or buy new boards which i know you want to do yeah when when yeah, reflowing though it's not just a matter of touching the solder soldering iron to the point though right uh you want to uh when you're doing soldering you want to put your tip on the pin as well as the pad you want two points of contact on there so you do that and then you just put a whole nice new bead of solder on there as well. You don't necessarily need to suck it off. Oh, okay. Um, with like a, a that's what I was suck. wondering. You can just yeah, you can just reflow a bit more on there, and just what you're doing is over time, of course, those pins, especially if they're lamp lamp pins, they heat up and cool down, heat up and cool down, and that's what causes the the cold solder mm. joint, and also some of the solder to melt away from the pad and stuff like that. Yeah. So what you're doing is by putting a nice fresh coat of solder over the top. You're, number one, you're reflowing the solder from the top of the board to the bottom because a lot of these boards have um, like a sort of uh, a channel that actually brings the solder from the top of the board to the bottom. Um, probably not on that era so much. I think they're either just on the top or on the bottom there's, and there's no through solder channel. But on like the Belly Williams of the 90s, they actually did have like... Um, uh, a core basically of um, tin that ran between the top and the bottom of the board and what you had to do with those if they failed was to actually just put a trace wire between the top and the bottom of the board to bridge the connection oh, okay um basically but yours i don't think you'll need to do that you'll just be heat the heat the pin and the pad and then just put a nice new uh, reflow of solder on there and that's all you need to do right. you can get um you can get relatively inexpensive um, um, bench soldering irons that I've, have an adjustable I've, heat. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I've got the, you know, you plug it into the wall soldering iron and away you go. <laughs> um, otherwise... I mean, that's all right. As long yeah. as it's low, it's got to be below... Uh, I think the one I've got ranges between 20 amps and 50 amps. Mm, or, yeah. or 20 watt and 50 watt. Anything higher than that, you'll you'll damage your pin. Uh, you'll damage your pads on the board. Mm, okay. You'll delaminate them from the board. Okay. So yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. The uh, the fun thing about eight ball deluxe, 
you can literally buy virtually the entire table. <laughs> it's like there's plastics. Oh, well, I mean, there are plastics available. There is play fields available. There is all the boards, except for interestingly the the squawk and talk. Can't seem to find a brand new squawk and talk that anybody's making. Um, but the yeah. the driver boards, the solenoid, the MPU, the lamp driver boards, those are all available. Um, Alltech makes all those. Uh, there's also another individual, uh, Weebly, I believe, that uh, is making them. They're not that much less expensive than the Alltech. Um, the Alltech seems to uh, look more modernized, whereas the Weebly looks like is kind of trying to imitate exactly what the uh, the previous board looked like. Um, but the advantage of both those boards is that they allow you to put LED bulbs into the table, whereas mm. currently I cannot. Um, now, eventually, I'm probably going to want to put LEDs because Eight Ball Deluxe is a pain in the butt to change the bulbs on. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, for now, I'm just uh, like, that's one of those expenses that if I don't really need to do it now, I don't want to do it right now because I want to save the money for firepower, which I know is going to suck a lot of money. <laughs> um, yeah, right. And I think it's going to take so much money to do firepower. Yeah, it's gonna. It just that needs a lot of help, uh, a lot of parts, um, and it doesn't right. help that it's been literally sitting out in the elements for quite a while. There's a there's a heavy coat of ick on it that I'm gonna have to clean right. off. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's yeah. it's just one of those things where uh, the Alltech driver board as well as the auxiliary board because Able Deluxe takes two lamp boards. Um, altogether, they're mm. just under 200 bucks. So, I mean, it's not like it's an extraordinary uh, cost, but um, it's still a cost that I'm not exactly looking forward to paying. Um, yeah. The biggest issue that I'm running across, and this one is just a head-scratcher for me, is that you knock down all seven of your stand-up targets, then you knock down the eight-ball target, and it starts scoring consistently. It's like, you hear the noise of the score as if you're hitting one of the deluxe targets, and that eight is just going whoop, 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 making noise, and it doesn't stop again until you yeah. put the ball into the saucer beyond the eight ball that resets everything. Right, It's right. fairly consistent that it's when the eight ball target drops, so I'm thinking that's where the issue is, but I, I don't understand. Like, the gaps look normal to me from what I can tell. I'm not sure what else is making contact or triggering or, or causing this. So I've got to do some troubleshooting on that to, to figure it out. The, the other option that you can um, choose as well, as far as boards go, there's a company down here in Australia called Tangles Pin Parts. Uh, it's the website is tanglestech.com. This guy does his own boards. Um, and um, the advantage of it is that you're paying Aussie dollar rates from US. So, um, that the, all the Australian operators, most of them use these boards hmm. down here, and they've got like a a lamp and LED driver board for um, both belly and stern. Yeah, there's actually a like yeah, a, they're the same a board that does both. Yeah, so and it's compatible with eight ball deluxe, um, and uh, yeah, it, this thing is like it's got flicker free LED uh, LED operation. Uh, you can also put uh, standard lamps in it um it's it's uses the exactly the same mountain points and everything so like it's 158 bucks australian so for both know. boards uh for the lamp driver yeah uh, amp led driver and then he's got another one which is the, the auxiliary board. board no i'm saying the auxiliary board so there's a lamp driver board and then there's an auxiliary lamp driver board uh yeah this one is uh a solenoid driver board for LED display equip belly and stern games. So, ah, right, you can send me the link. I'll take a look at it, see what's what. Yeah, it's there's, yes, um, there's a lot of options this guy yeah. has, and they're they're really good. Anyway, the other thing that I've uh, uh, <laughs> the where my my hack was, and this will be featured in the video when I put it out. Uh, the seven bank drops when all the drop targets dropped, they were just below the play field and the ball mm. would get stuck there. And yes. I'm talking slam tilts wouldn't move the ball out of that trough. <laughs> yeah, they, they, it was basically a, uh, a locking mechanism that you didn't want. Exactly. Exactly. So underneath the, the uh, solenoid that brings up 
it just needed to flex up just a little bit, just enough mm. to bring the rest of the, you know, everything in line so the ball would roll off. And I'm like, what can I put underneath there? What can I put underneath there? And foam, I was like, that's bad because that's going to rot eventually or it's going to get a crease in the groove and it's just going to go lower and lower. I'm like, I need something solid, but I don't have anything solid. And then I was like, wait a second, because I had two coins just sitting in the trough. <laughs> I put the two coins underneath. I'm like, it's not quite high enough, but I wonder. I found three pennies, put them on it. It was like perfect. So double stick taped the pennies together, put a little double stick on the bottom of that, put that underneath. Ta-da, problem solved. And then I commented that, you know, there's actually adjustment screws that you just use. No, not on that one. Not on the seven bank. It's on the inline. There is. On the seven bank, there's not. That's that's crazy. Isn't oh, it, actually, though? Okay, so the seven bank, yeah. The seven bank has always been a, a problem because of just the fact there's targets behind it as well. Yes. It's a very deep, they are very, very deep um, drop target bank. So if you think about it, if the the targets went behind that you'd have a rubber basically pushing out the 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 level of where the ball rests on there and that would that would mean that the problem solved so it's just a design flaw yeah. with that particular game yeah yeah so anyway there's the uh there's the fun that's going on in uh in the real pinball world of my house uh, let's move into that, uh, what's that? I was going to say the the seven bank that when you had that bench, that there's a lot going on in that seven bank. There is, target. Like there is. They they use like full size solenoids to reset and drop the yep the, the drop targets. That's really interesting because in um, my Force Two with Gottlieb, their they their drop target assembly um, has just relay relay coils and yeah. little trips and it just goes trip 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 and the, the, it just does it like that rather than having this massive coil poking the drop targets well and so william has eventually went to an, a fully electronic system yeah right um that apparently has its own host of problems <laughs> um, oh yes <laughs> you know yeah. the uh like I said, usually the mechanical stuff i'm fine tinkering with um, mm. because it's easy to troubleshoot. There's, you know, you try this, you try that. Um, that's yeah. why this eight ball target thing is frustrating me to no end. Cause I'm like, it's gotta be, a, I would think it's a mechanical contact point. Something's making contact mm. and triggering. I just don't know where it is. So I'm going to, I told Jared, I'm going to put pieces it. of paper in between everything and then try and one by one figure out what's, <laughs> what's, what's the issue. I definitely um, think it's going to be that singular drop target, and it's probably going to be like that era of belly. Um, for some reason, required resistors, inline resistors on all the switches, yes. and they are big and bulky, and they notoriously snap the legs right off at the base of the resistor. Mm. Um, so I would be lifting up the play field, wiggling that, and chances are it'll just be hanging on there by by hopes and dreams, basically. In which case, I use the soldering iron and... Uh, <laughs> no, I replace it. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to some uh, some digital nonsense then, if we will. So... Yes, we like digital nonsense. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've been playing on the uh, At Games 4K cabinet a lot. I'm mm. telling you right now, that's fun. That's the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's. I don't want to play pinball on my PC now. It's just. It's what it should be. You know what I mean? It's. This it's, is the way. Yeah, it's it's what I wanted the pin sim to be, but I was still playing on the PC, and there was still the rotating the screen, and it wasn't flat, mm. and it just you know it was like a good simulation, and the pin sim was fantastic for VR. But then you were limited to only those VR games. Yes, that's right. Um, with the 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 ad game system, obviously there's all the tables that are built into it, and I'll talk about those in a moment, but the physical standing in front of the machine, being able to nudge it, uh, being able to look up and see a DMD, look down, see the play field, it just feels right. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's a fantastic feeling. And I did hook up my PC... Um, with my very old 970 video card in it right now. Um, that And uh, I did put some games 
onto there just to try and see how they're running on there. Mm. And uh, some work better than others. I will say this right now. FX3 works pretty damn well. Oh, like, does it? I understand why people are kind of ticked off at pinball effects because what <laughs> looks like the same miles. tables, FX3 next to no lag, FX lag on this card. Now, you have to have a better card, then you won't have the flipper lag. Um, but interestingly it's enough... Is it 960 the base card? It's a 970. Supported? Oh, 970 is... The, oh, 970. Yeah. That's what you've got. Yes. And I think, what, 960 is the minimum I think so, spec. yeah. Yeah. So, you're right, that, that's, <laughs> that'll be the reason. Um, but interestingly enough, FX2 runs just as bad as Pinball FX. Oh, really? FX3, so great. Engine. FX2, not great. <laughs> Not so great. That's yeah. really weird. Which eh? I really thought was interesting. Um, Pinball Wicked plays pretty good. The problem is, is it is not optimized for a cabinet at all. Oh, right. Um, okay. You literally have to first change the orientation of your main play field in order to play it in cabinet, in portrait mode, which I'm like, come on, oh. guys. I mean, I know it's 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 been out a while, and yet it's still in uh, early access early mode. Access. <laughs> I don't yeah. think they're really it doing hasn't any really any updates. No, in the last no. Few years, so it's, um, and then it's going to remain in early access, I think, forever. And then there's no DMD uh, support, no. none of that. So it's that's kind of like it's kind of a bummer because um, I did try and I flipped everything and made it work, and uh, I was like, hey, this is cool, you know, to be able to play, and it actually ran pretty good. Um, so no worries there. The one that's surprising me is I put in Demon's Tilt. Now, oh, yeah. Demon's Tilt also does not support DMD. Um, no, it has its display. Sort it's, of it has its display overlay. there. And there's <clears throat> enough customization in terms of zoom in, zoom out, that I can get virtually the entire play field uh, on the screen yeah. at the same time. It's just with minimal up and down movement. Um, I, of course, turn off the shake, turn off the blinkers, because uh, that's just too distracting to me. Um, yeah, well, I actually don't. I have those things on either for the exactly the same reason. Yeah. Um, it's just like too much. The, yeah, it really um, is. But it's great fun in cabinet display. I'm just like, yeah. this is that... Uh, I once... Xenotilt gets its 20% sale. <laughs> I'll finally purchase that. Um, they had it for like 13 yeah. recently. I'm like, nope, I want 20%. Thank you very much. Um, but it yeah, no, that was that was great. And I really wish... Fun and tight. Yeah, I wish that they would throw some kind of support for cabinet into it. Um, use, utilize the backrest. Spread you know, spread some stuff. But I know that they're not going to, which is a shame. Yeah. Um, but that was a, that was a good bit of fun. No doubt about I it. I have actually experienced what I did is when I had uh, when I was messing around with VR on the computer, I actually used virtual desktop uh, and switched um, Demon's Tilt to a, a Tate mode mm -hmm. and and had it on like a what is essentially like a sixty inch screen <laughs> in VR. Yeah, and I just went this is the way I want to experience this for now on. But then, you know, you, you got a VR headset on, you got to change your orientation. Yes. And it's, it's again, like, I'm lazy when I want to go and play Precisely. Games, right? I don't want to mess around with stuff. I just want to go, oh, I just want to turn it on and play it because I don't have time to screw around. And, and that's and like, you know, that's, that's the same reason why I'm not getting into all the VR, like the Unreal Engine VR stuff because yeah. I just don't have the time to mess about. I want to actually... I just want to play a bit of a pinball. I don't want to spend half an hour playing pinball and then turn off the PC because yeah. I run out of time. And and that's like, what I'm really liking about this cabinet. You flick it on <clears> within a minute. You're playing. Um, you know the the tables that are uh, available to you to play right there. Turning on mm. the PC since pinball is the only thing I have on it. Um, it fires up really quick. <laughs> and so I, you just basically have everything set up so. Um, it, it's all set up for landscape. It's all done. So you pretty much fire it up and it works. Yeah, I already went through uh, all the Zen uh, titles and oriented it correctly, moved the DMD where it needs to be. So that's all set up and ready to go. Um, right. Uh, so really for you, it is 
once you actually have it set up like that, it is just turn it on and start playing it. Well, and yeah, and I mean, I still have to fire up Steam, but once I do the baller installer, they have scripting that allows you to completely skip all of that too, and it just goes right. straight to the table. So, oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so that once I get my new card, that's when I'll be dealing with that. Um, new card. There's another reason why I don't want to spend money on the uh, <laughs> the all tech board because. It's gonna cost me about. Card. It's gonna cost me almost six hundred bucks. Or actually, I think it is six hundred for a new video card. So, um, for an Nvidia four four seventy super. Yeah, yeah, that that will cost you about that much because they're expensive. Yeah, I mean the non super is is five fifty, and it's kind of like that's the one that's gonna get phased out. So you might as well go with the other one anyway. Hmm. Um, oh, you know they're releasing. They they've announced um, the uh, the fifty X series now. You're always going to be chasing. You are yeah. always going to be chasing. So at some point, you just got to commit. <laughs> you just got to like, what's the rule? You got to buy the best cards you can for the money you have right now. Well, and on top of that, uh, because the motherboard that I have is four years old at this point, uh, that's also going to be the source of the bottleneck. So at a certain point, it doesn't matter what video card you throw in, the motherboard's going to be your your issue. That's true, the in-out on the motherboard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why it's like, uh, this is the point <laughs> that I'm like, yeah, that'll be the card. Yeah, I don't need to try and wait for anything else. And uh, you, you know. might also need to just put aside a little bit of extra money for a new power supply. No, too, power supply is good in what I have. Already checked. Oh, so the connectors on it will work? Oh, yeah. On the, on the um, 40X? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because they, they introduced this new pin um, style for the uh, the RTX cards. That's like a, a new type of power connector, hmm. um, and it's uh, it was one that was notoriously melting um, when people were overclocking the cards. But I think they've worked that out now. Okay, uh, yeah. So just check your check your um, your power supply to make yeah. sure it's compatible. Um, okay, back to gaming with this thing. What I want to talk about. Mm. Uh, so. Recently, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, they finally released the Gottlieb packs. Oh, right. On now, 4K. Yeah, on 4K. Now, the Gottlieb packs, these are from Farsight, <laughs> who does not make pinball anymore. Um, they released these packs initially for the uh, original Ad Games HD pinball, which came out, what, four years ago? Yeah. Um, it's been four years. Wow. It's been okay. four. Well, yeah, it came out in 2020. Yeah. During the pandemic. Wow. Um, and even then, I had my doubts that they were going to be anything beyond what was already available in Pinball Arcade, right? If mm. anything, I figured yes. they, and I think somebody from Arcuda kind of expressed this same sentiment. Hey, that looks like what we worked on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Um yeah. So I have a sneaky suspicion <laughs> um that that's where this cabinet version of these came from. Mm, this is four year old software. Yeah. So yeah. when everybody was getting excited for oh, the Gottlieb tables are coming in four K, I was like, uh y'all coming, wanna you're gonna need to tamper those on expectations. The 4K system, but they're not gonna be four K. No way. Um, so I arranged for myself to be, uh, gifted codes for pack one and two. Now, granted, keep in mind, each of these packs, normally $25. 25 bucks. Okay. 25 bucks per pack. Um, and how many tables in each Okay, so within pack one, we're talking about, uh, Al's Garage Band World Tour, Big Shot, Black Hole, Bone Busters, and Centigrade 37. Um... Of those, I could really care less about Bone Busters. <laughs> and mm. World Tour, I was like, whatever. I, yeah, okay, sure, fine. I really wanted it for Big Shot, Black Hole, and Centigrade because I wanted something that Farsight did do fairly well was the EM era stuff. Yeah, they they actually did. Yeah. yeah. Um, pack two is uh, Cue Ball, uh, Cue, Cue Ball Wizard, which I enjoy that. Going Nuts, mm. which I really despise. <laughs> um, it's horrible. Yeah. Jack's Open, an EM. Uh, Lights, Camera, Action, gross. Gottlieb Premier. 
Uh, TX oh, yeah. Sector, early got for lead premiere, not bad. I don't think it's as great TX as everybody. This is actually pretty good. I enjoy that game. Yeah, it's not a bad game. And then Victory, which I actually really enjoy. It's just got a really poor rule set. That yeah, the layout is great. The rule the set. Shots are so fun in that game. Like, they are. I remember it's just you know when you get when you number one you have got to work out where the shots are. Yes, this is a hard bit. But once you do, you go oh you're cool, and it just it flows really well. That game. Yes. It sure mm. does. Um, so, hold on. I'm trying to blow this image up. There we go. Why are you? All right. I'm not going to get so lucky. Okay. Anyway. Um, so, I load this thing up, and the first thing I load up is Black Hole. Because I'm like, let's see. Oh, well. Because here's the thing about Black Hole. Jared knows this very well. It's a square body. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's it's super chunky. <laughs> it's very wide, yeah, and I was like, wide. "How are they going to do this? Are they going to have a lot of apron? What is going to be the game plan?" And mm. I loaded it up, <clears throat> and let's just show you what the image is that I see. Oh shoot, our <laughs> the very thing I want to show. I'm blocking um, with our stuff. Let me hide our. Uh, Oh, you're talking about the plunger lane. Oh, the plunger lane, yes, because there's a ball in yeah. there. And, and let me guess, the ball... I, I already know what's... Oh, there what's goes you, like. and where am I? There I it's going to be oval, isn't it? Ah, not that one. Shoot, where's my display? Why can't I figure out where the heck my display... There it is. Boink! There it is. Whoo, look at that oh, ball! what is that? <laughs> what is that? Okay. It looks like all the chrome's rubbed off it. Well, first off, there's that. Yeah, it's... It looks like a ceramic ball that it has a matte okay. painting finish on it. That The image that's on there, it has a little Gottlieb logo. Is that what's on there? Yes, it's a Gottlieb logo. Okay. Okay. But that ball is not shiny in the least. But more importantly, yeah. it's freaking oblong. It is. It's, yes, it's oval. So they squeezed. I, I knew it was going to be oval. They squeezed. Look at the plunger texture. Look, what is going on with that plunger rod? Um, it looks like, like the T-1000 has pushed a, a thin <laughs> cylindrical finger in there. It's, it's now the launch ball. Like, now, also, you know? uh, this is a zoomed-in photo, so you're seeing uh, chromatic aberration from the TV screen being photographed. So uh, ignore that part. Understand right, that right. the stuff is clear. But no, you're correct. The textures aren't exactly the the most amazing. They're not 4K. No, not even close to 4K. That's for sure. No. Okay. Um, they did, and you can kind of tell, make the apron cards readable. Yeah. Because if you if yes. you looked in Pinball Arcade, those were a blurry mess. You couldn't read them. No. Okay. Yeah. Next image. No, they're pretty sharp. Okay. What are we looking uh -huh. at here? You see the ball. Does it look like it's touching the flipper to you? D no. no. No, and yet it's, it's cradled. Like, it's, like... it's cradled and captured. Yeah, and also it's got like a weird silhouette on okay. the, underneath it. You want to know what that is? That What's silhouette that? is the locked ball in the under play field. What's it doing all the way down there? Why can like, you see it through plywood is my question. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, what's it doing down there? There's no lock ball underneath. There, there. is a lock ball on the, on the under play field. You can lock a ball there. Yeah, but it's like stored way up the other end of the planet. Well, I, mean, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, but yes, you can. It is there. Now, here's the okay. thing. I checked, and you can see this transparent ball all over the place. Like once once the uh, you've drained from the lower play field, you can see the ball travel everywhere, underneath the lights, to the side. It's like it's almost as if Farsight just turned on and off a layer. But they yeah for sure they did yeah. yeah but they but they kept it there still tracking I don't know um, if you play I pinball arcade yeah if you play they pinball had to, arcade that's how they track the ball in the game uh, this is present in pinball arcade also it's just really? not as noticeable because you're on a computer screen and not on a giant image um, also the angle wow. that when you play on uh, TV screen or on the your computer screen. 
that captured ball actually finds itself underneath the slingshot, so it's less noticeable um, due to okay. the angle. Wow. I also think due to the angle, uh, the ball looks like it's truly cradled as opposed to here where it's clearly not even touching the flipper. Something else I want to point out. No. Look at the um, the posts. Those are not round. No, they're very uh, the, hexagonal. Hexagonal. There is hexagonal lines all over the place. This is where they yeah. cheaped out on the poly count when they yes. were dumbing this down for uh, uh, mobile gaming. Yep. And since this is essentially a mobile platform, this is what Farsight produced. Terrible. Yep. Not good. All right. Moving no. on. Black Hole is the biggest mess at all. So then you get things like this. So that thousand insert, it looks like a yeah. poor sticker that was up next to plenty of stuff that wasn't up -rezzed. You know, that plastic is hexagonal. Um, yeah. The the clear plastic is just a little bit weird cloudy. That that spinner is not anything amazing. There's like certain aspects that they cleaned up, like the the plastic on the slingshot, those were notoriously blurry. It's nice and clear, but it feels like a cutout just pasted on top. Um, and let's not even begin to mention the uh, saucer texture. Oh, um, you look at that. Yeah. What's going on there? I because that's horrible. It's horrible. Uh, yeah. There's, there's. I mean, even the screw coming out of that post, uh, right on the uh, 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 to the upper lane, it's not coming yeah. out the middle. And it's not coming out the middle, and it's also because I know got leaves the wrong screw. <laughs> <laughs> it should be a flat. It should be a um, a cuphead screw going into that particular one, not and a bolt like that. And I'm just going to say this. When I went up to visit Farsight way back when, um, and I got to see them working on a machine, and they were able to do flyby and change the angle of the machine any which way they want, I saw just how misaligned everything is. They aligned it for that those table angles. But the, once... The Right. The viewing angle. But it once in, once you went one. into it, things were not aligned at all. Because um, they they basically, to, to digitize the play field, they have to take it like top down. Right? Yes. And then, right. So when if you think about it, you go from top down to angled. And then all the things that are sticking out from the play field then have to shift and make sure they look like they're sitting flat. Yeah. on the play field. Yeah. And that's where the illusion breaks. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, you also have to realize that Black Hole was a day one release back in 2012 on Pinball that's right, Arcade. It was too. These yes. scans are from 2012. They never rescan the table. Mm -mm. So nope. <laughs> you're talking about 12-year-old Images here, um, and it's and it pain shows. it's painfully obvious on this and victory, as opposed to when you look at Bone Busters, where everything looks really good. Because um, they got a better camera, they got a better camera and a better way of scanning. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at some more uh, <laughs> some more things that what your twenty five dollars buys you. <laughs> um, wow. That's uh, a little, oh, okay. That's a so, point. big shot. I just want to point this out. Um, Big Shot looks great for the most part. This is the back glass. Okay? Big Shot, it's right. a two-player game. We have two reels. One looks real. Uh-huh. And one does not. And only one reel works. So, so the reel on so the left... Play, the reel on the left is digital. Game. And if you play two-player, the where it says ball and play... Or, not excuse me, not ball and play. No, the... Uh, uh, Somewhere indicates, oh, yeah, so you see number one and number two. Um, basically, the two will light up for player two, but it'll score on the player one's score reel. Oh, that's And then it dances back and forth. Slack. But even worse than that, wow. really? You took a picture where your reel isn't lined up, and you just have that zero it's... not in place? <laughs> oh. This is, reminds me of when they left the keys in Scared Stiff and used that image. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, and that took them for three or four years to just take yeah. a new photo of it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The shortcuts here are just <laughs> for twenty five. I mean, the thing is that there, there's no way these are going to be fixed. No. Because there's no way. They no. will not be fixed. Guaranteed. No. They're just so slack. Okay, back to one last wow. black hole. Okay. And let me guess, those digits don't actually rotate like an actual reel. They just no, they change. just they just change. Yeah. And there's no change. and there's no audio of the reel changing, which is a big part of an EM that uh, that's a massive ch- part ch- of the ch- EM. That it's, click, that it, noise. It is the solenoids are the actual music for the Yes. Table. Okay. Back to black hole, because I wanted to point this right. out. See where it says credits and ball and play? Yeah. Those lights don't work. Oh, the displays don't work. No. Which means you have no clue what ball you are playing because oh, nowhere on the back glass does it say what ball you're playing either because that there was no digits on the back glass for that. The digits were right there in the apron. And didn't they, when they were doing the, the display, they actually showed the ball and play as like part of the display area yeah so they had the scores pop up in the corner and underneath it it said ball and it was there and they had this little you know stylized thing yes that is what farsight had done for playing in pinball arcade they have done nothing for this so you literally don't know what ball the only saving grace is it does have the four balls uh, uh or the four scores and if you're playing two player it does keep the two scores on where they should be Otherwise, you got to keep track of what ball you're on by yourself. You have no indication of knowing what ball you're on. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jared's just like, unbelievable. This is... <laughs> no, it's believable. It's, it's believable. Just, it's just terrible. That's all. Um, okay, Bone Busters. Uh, I just want to show this back glass. Now, these what? back these back glasses you can stretch to fit the entire screen, but of course it's then stretched. It looks terrible. Um, right. Also, right. what I do have to laugh at is Gottlieb Premier used the absolute smallest LEDs they could for displaying scores, and truth yeah, be told, this is about right. <laughs> uh, about the size, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much. Right, yeah. Yeah. So I found it interesting, though. Okay, so obviously this particular score is part of the back glass. And so in the DMD area, they just put that big old Gottlieb logo. At least they put something there. With with something, like, looks like it's on the back of a mesh speaker panel or something. Yeah, okay. Compare that to TX Sector, where it had a dedicated spot, and so they put that into the DMD. So I appreciate that. That was nice. That's That Mm. works for me. And again... That's about the correct size for what the <laughs> the yeah, score displays were on on these that's things. That's right. Yeah, they um, are tiny, stupid little stupid, uh, just just beyond weak. But uh, so yeah, I just want to for ants. I just want to show that um, that TX sector backlash, by the way, is terrible. I hate that it's it, and this is what it looks like in real life. I hate that it looks completely blown out, overexposed. Just it's just a yeah. bad photo. Um, yeah, it's still not as bad as Genesis, but it's <laughs> oh Genesis backlash is just trash. <laughs> like the artwork on Genesis backlash is horrible. Uh, the color choices um, on the entire play for a little horrible too. But anyway, everything's horrible. About the Everything, game, but yes, yeah. pepped up abysmal puke. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. so this is the playfield for TX sector. Okay, and I just yeah, want right. to kind of show this um, TX sector relatively clear. Um, the drop targets look proper. Uh, yeah, you know it. it that actually lo- looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. I, I really do not have a complaint about the look of everything on this playfield. Now compare that to victory. Victory oh, is exactly nice. what it looks like in Pinball Arcade. All that you know down at the bottom there, where your eye is, where it says scoring multiplier when flashing and don't lose it. It's blurry. Yeah. Which is what's yeah. in your face. It's blurry. Um, interestingly Ugh. enough, that upper play field where it says making fuel, that's clear, which really drives me bonkers. And the, the fact that that stuff on the bottom is blurry. <laughs> um, it's got janky corners 
every which way. Again, this was scanned. I, I, was Victory Season 1 or Season 2? I can't remember, but it's in those first two years of Pinball Arcade. So it got a poor scan. It just did. It really did. Um, uh, I don't know if I have the picture. Uh, okay, I'm going to have to look and see. Let me, let me try and find this because there was one thing that I showed Jared that was also appalling. Um, oh, was that the zoomed in yes. light array? The, yes. yes. Okay, I'm gonna let me real that quick. Is... Let me real quick find this because um, it's it's quite hilarious. The the thing I find strange about these the the Gottlieb tables yeah. is the the just the disparity in quality between oh. them. You would have thought that you know if they're making a package like that and specifically for something like the the 4k or even the the one four years ago let's just let's just set the bar really really low just spend some time normalizing the way these tables look so that they look the same yes um and sure you're gonna have problems with playfield capture and like artifact capture and stuff like that and you know Maybe maybe that's a bit like one step too far to say, well, let's go and recapture everything. Oh, look at it. <laughs> this is the ball lock. The ball sometimes doesn't even go in the saucer. It just hangs around. It just the hangs area. around there. Yeah, <laughs> looking completely it's flat. <laughs> it's just Yeah, yeah. That's great. Terrible. And just look at the but you I mean that that wasn't the thing that really jumped out at me when mm. you showed me this picture. What did? It was just the hexagonal nature of that lighting strip. Look oh, at them. Yeah. The rivets, the actual rivets that the little small little um fairy lights go into. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Just why don't you just make them square? Save a couple more polygons, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Again, that's uh that's the nature of what twenty five dollars buys you. <laughs> um uh, that's twenty five US as well, folks. Twenty five like, US. <laughs> that's that's a. Um, <laughs> that's not no, again, what, this is tables? this is not a knock on at games. This is not at games because it's not at games problem. They are not the ones that did this the software. Is a software problem. This, this is a purely one hundred percent farsight. Problem. Going, what's the bare minimal effort that we can do? How how much and then let's go lower than in? that. <laughs> yeah, how much can we phone this in? Oh, about this much. About that much. Yeah. yeah. Um. Now, wow. that's not to say. That the games aren't fun. <laughs> um, like I said, I've been putting in a lot of time on Victory. It really is a fun game. I enjoy playing it. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, Jack's Open and and Big Shot, they play great. They 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 are fun tables to play. You just wish that graphically they looked better. Um, yeah, they and just, I think they want for, them to be up to scratch. Yeah, and I think for people that uh, are doing VPX, there's no, going to be no comparison. Um, people who are actually playing these through um, VPX are going to be having like a much better time playing these. Yeah, um, than they would on the the, the packs supplied by Fast. Yes, the other sure. the other critique. Um, because again, it, there's no sense in reviewing the gameplay itself because you know whether you play it in real life or whatever, Gottlieb did what Gottlieb needed to do, and Farsight did that translation of that gameplay. It's there; that yeah. stuff is there. So if you love, you know, these tables, you're still gonna love them. How are the physics? They're pretty much what you expected from Pinball Arcade. They're much more floaty. Um, mm. And there are still the vacuum ramps, so that's still very much in play. Um, the big disappointment comes in the sound department. So two right. things. Again, this is a software issue because it does not happen with any of the Zen tables, does not happen with any of the Magic Pixel tables. Oftentimes, you'll start up a Gottlieb table, and it'll do a speaker click. And you have to turn the game off. Because I have my volume really low, but some people have their volume really high, and they're like, it'll blow out your speakers. Um, wow. Okay. I don't know what the cause is, but it's clearly a software thing because it only happens with the Gottlieb tables. 
And you mm-hmm. basically you start the table up four or five times and eventually it goes away. And then it doesn't come back until you maybe start two or three other tables and then it'll, it'll reappear. Um, so that's an issue that a lot of people have been complaining about. That will not be solved. <laughs> Probably not. Um, Probably not. The other issue, when you play a EM, what's the main thing that you hear? <laughs> the chimes. Um, loud. Chimes. Yeah, they're really loud. I cannot make them loud. I have the sound of, like, the... I have the volume all the way up for them while lowering mm-hmm. the sound effects volume or the, the mechanical effects volume down because the ball roll is so freaking loud. Oh, yeah. To be distracting. You just constantly hear this... <laughs> of the ball rolling around. I'm just like... Ugh. And and Farsight did this whole extra menu system of adjustments for sound and everything, and it's very clunky and doesn't work like you would hope. Um, but the no. fact that you can't make the chimes very loud is quite annoying. Um, and then, like I said, the fact that you don't hear the reels turning in no way, shape, or form, they just didn't record those. Is a crime because no. that's part of the appeal. There should also be a hum when you hold the flippers up. That's not there. In fact, of I think there was some EMs where they did actually implement a flipper hum because I remember there was some. Wait on I purpose? Was, like yeah, Zen did? Or I mean, uh, Farsight did? Firepower, not Firepower. Um, fireball. Fireball. I think you're right. I I'm think they did sure that with Fireball. It had they actually added in? a like a stroke sound and then a hold sound yeah but there were two separate sound effects yeah. that went in so um, it, they did do it just not they I like everything farsight developed things as a um a snapshot in time i think is how i describe it okay yeah once that once the table was done it was done and yeah. they would really go back and retroactively apply things they did in later seasons yeah and the lessons learned like i think it was hard enough for us to get switch animations put into some of the earlier tables oh yeah um you know after incessant badgering um on the forums to say look you know get just can we just get the animated switches put into all the tables and that was like a you know oh we have to go through and update them all it's like well yeah yeah so you know um like i said it's just it's just a shame i really wish magic pixel (laughs) oh jeez 100 percent got the Gottlieb license because here's the thing magic pixels fit and finish on all their tables that are on this cabinet are gorgeous they are yeah just everything is crisp and clear and the sound is really in your face and the surround sound feedback kit they utilized it to the max um Mm -hmm. they really knew what they were doing with that um does that mean the Magic Pixel tables are better? Uh, hell no. <laughs> no. I'll go into that in a second. But, but their in terms of implementation of them, their implementation, is... oh my God, the Gottliebs would be fantastic if Magic Pixel got their hands on them. Oh, no gosh. doubt about it. We've been saying this for, what, at least four or five years. Oh, but longer than that. Yeah. To say that, you know, that Farsight just needs to let the license go and just. Yeah. Like, focus on their cornhole game and their bowling game or whatever the <laughs> heck they're selling now. Whatever shovel no it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just give give it up so other people can do stuff with the license. Yeah. Um, but there's the, but here's the crux, though. I'm finding myself playing the Gottlieb tables more than I am playing the Magic Pixel tables. D- despite right. the fact even that in the, the graphics, even in the quality that they are. Um, yeah. And that's that's a weird conundrum. Um, do you think that's just because the Magic Pixel games are just fundamentally weird? Okay, um, when I say Magic Pixel, I mean the Zacharia. Okay, so let me, weird. yeah, let me let me break it down to you like this: hmm. the Magic Pixel Tato packs, yeah, are surprisingly great. Yes, um, they are very simple layouts, very EM early solid state era uh, reminiscent. There's not a whole 
if there's a ramp at all, um, it's just lane shooting and drop targets um, mm. and rules that fit that era. The only thing that I would go eh on is Magic Pixel's music sucks. Now, some yes. of these are incorporating tunes from the Taito games, and that's great. Um, <clears throat> but even still, Magic Pixel winds up throwing in some extra. Area where Magic Pixel can improve, their score display on everything but their, call it their core three games, which are uh, Bubble Bubble, Space Invaders, and uh, Project or Operation Wolf, uh, which are technically, you could call them DMD games because they have the digital DMD, but everything mm -hmm. else uses a score reel, but it's an even worse looking digital <laughs> version. It doesn't even attempt to try and look like a score reel. It's just like, yep, that's where a score reel would be, and there's some you know numbers that digitally change there. Yeah, right. Um, but the title packs, 100% get those. They're fantastic. The Dr. Seuss packs look beautiful, have a pretty decent sound package in terms of, again, not mechanical effects, but uh, music, audio, not bad. It, a lot of good call-outs. Okay. But there is ramps and wireforms and third-level play fields everywhere. To the point that you mess. have you have no clue where you're to shoot, what to do. And unfortunately, the rules are blah. Same as... Right. Uh, so that was, those are the Seuss. Then you have the natural history tables. Same issue. There's yeah. just multiple levels, wire forms everywhere. Uh, Callouts aren't bad. But the video DMD, and this is across the board on every Zachariah Deluxe table, the Seuss tables, and the Natural History tables, it does that same stupid kaleidoscope in the background with the exact same font across the board everywhere. Right. It is poorly implemented, very lazy. Just, just real lazy. Does yeah. not involve you in the least. Um, mm -hmm. you might as well have just given me a plain black and white score for what it's doing. Um, it's, it's, right. it's, it's just bad. Um, the deluxe tables, again, just overcomplicated ramps every which way, but every single table essentially has the exact same rule set. So they're just boring. They're not interesting. Mm -hmm. You, you feel like you played one, you played them all. Um, right. But they look really good, but they're just bleh. Um, bleh. And, and the thing is, is bleh. I don't have any of the regular Zacharia on there because I have them on the PC and I rarely play them <laughs> there either because I didn't find the Zacharia tables all that interesting ever. They always no. seemed like cheap, bad knockoffs of a pinball machine you'd actually want to play. Um, so of all the Magic Pixels, like I said, the Taito Packs, great. The yeah. end. Um, and that is all. Yeah. And then and then you come into the Zen tables. So you've got Snoopy and Adam's family. Um, they look fantastic, but you got that damn flipper lag that you got to deal with. Um, yeah. Your brain can't adjust, <clears throat> but it where it do, can't adjust fast enough is on twitch reaction when the ball is bouncing between you know your 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 flippers and you need to do that last second twitch. You're never going to be able to react fast enough because it's just a smidgen too late for where you visually yep. see it to when you visually hit. Um, it's something that Zen is very much working on uh, from reports. I guess uh, Attack from Mars the cabinet has now found its way into uh, people's homes and they're saying Attack from Mars does not have any lag. And that might be because Zen had already figured that one out for mobile. Maybe. And they just need to patch it. Yeah. Um, so uh, but I know that Zen is very much working on that. Once Zen dials that in, those tables are going to be phenomenal. Except yeah. for Zen sound package. They don't know how to utilize the surround sound effect yet, the, the surround sound feedback kit. Um, yeah. The under table noises are... Boy, you can hear that ball drop into the subway. <laughs> it's yeah. loud. It's like clunk. Yeah, but 
when a ball hits the flipper, it makes an audible dunk noise. Yeah. What that is, is it's what would have made your controller rumble. Right. That shouldn't make a sound at all. Hmm. And there are sounds like that, or, or a lot of the sounds sound muffled, as opposed to being, and again, it, it's so noticeable when you play, go from a Zen table to a Magic Pixel table. The Magic table, Magic Pixels, it sounds like this machine is in front of you. The Zen table sounds like there's this underwater filter <laughs> in yeah, front of you. It's just because like, the effects were designed to be coming out of like TV speakers mm -hmm. or your headphones, therefore direct to you, whereas now they're filtering through speakers that are underneath the in, yeah. inside a cabinet. Yeah. So and they just need to they up. just need to dial the tone and and make Start some treble a bit. Yeah. Make some adjustments or talk to Magic Pixel and go, hey, what are you guys doing? Because honestly, they should just talk to Magic Pixel. They should. Say, hey, what lessons learns. They just, should. You know. Because Magic Pixel's been at this, they've been they've had four years of practice on it. Yeah. Um, they show it's like they execute totally. that really well. Totally. Totally. Mm. So I'm hoping that Zen will get there, uh, that they don't just go, well, no, this is us. Um, I hope they don't do that. I hope they dial it in specifically for this, but we'll see. Mm. Speaking of Zen, new table announcements. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it's the Universal TV, uh, what do they call it, Classic Collection? Is that uh, sound about right? Sounds about right. Um, yeah, so it's all the TV shows that we grew up with. Well, that us, that our generation grew up with. <laughs> um, Mel had hinted to me and Jared that uh, he decided to pick properties that interested him. Mm. And I think this is a clear example of that. So we're getting a Knight Rider table. We're getting yep. a uh, Xena Warrior Princess table. <laughs> And we're getting yeah. a Battlestar Galactica that would be the, uh, not the 1970s Battlestar Galactica, but the early the aughts remake. <laughs> Battlestar Galactica. Yeah. Um, yeah, table. So three of those. And the one that has me the most excited is the Knight Rider table. That um, feels so good. Mm. All I've been able to see is the, you know, the, the, the really quick um, promo sizzle reel for it. And Wow. That looks so good. It looks so good. It, it, you guys really need to check it out. Uh, here's the thing you need to know. This is Deep's first table in like three years. And I love a table by Deep. He does yeah. fantastic work. Um, two, it's not about Michael Knight. It's about Kit. Thank God. I was really glad that there's no Hoff on the table because I just can't. And, that's, and you think about it, right? Like That is exactly what it should be because then... Kit is talking to you. Exactly. As Michael Knight. Exactly. Absolutely um, nailed that. Like, it, that is beautiful. It also has a uh, reminiscent of Jurassic Park, uh, that little treadmill part oh, of, yeah. up on the top. But what's cool is that the car jumps from the play field up to that and back down, and it's doing a little yeah. Back to the Future DeLorean action with, you know, spinning out in the play field. Um, there's just a lot that I love about that trailer, and it's got me really excited. Uh, and on top of that, Licensed music. Mm. Yes. Love yeah. that music. That just got me just like very happy to hear that. Um, yeah. Because that's such an iconic part of that show too. Yes, absolutely. Um, that table, probably out of the three, has got me the most excited. Oh, yeah. Although, like just, just from what I see mm -hmm. without having actually flip it, that's got me really interested. Yeah. Uh, mm. I never watched Xena. So I have no connection. Oh, I did. Did you? Well, of course All you did. All the time. <laughs> that All was like, the time. Well, it's not, it wasn't quite a homegrown product. It was across the pond from you, homegrown product. Yeah, that's right. It was actually produced in New Zealand, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, it, Xena was on TV all the time. I watched it all the time. Uh, it was it, it was definitely like a, I don't know, I like to say a Saturday night watch, you know. That one uh, is a table good. by uh, Anna, and yeah. it has an interesting figure eight thing going on up top that kind of reminds me of the getaway uh the supercharger a little bit a little it bit i don't think it's the, i don't of, think it's the same kind of thing but what it reminds me a little bit also of one of the star wars tables of which the name eludes me um that had a similar sort of like a crossover ramp thing up mm. the top um it's uh you could also say it's a little bit like uh dragons as well 
in that it's got that sort of like it sort of does a little sort of a loop like that as well mm -hmm. so there's a bit of there's a bit of zen dna creeping into this table i think but i know that you pointed out the uh voice call out on that one sounds like lucy laws oh geez there if if that's not lucy that is a very very good sound alike yeah uh, that they've got on that table and certainly the voiceover sounds like it's being lifted directly from the show okay like yeah, the actual um, the guy who does the um, the narration. Oh, okay. The opening scenes. Okay, that sounds very much on point. So again, I I know nothing about the show, so I have to defer to what you're noticing. Uh, Even to... the, like the likeness of all the animated, like they've got Lucy Lawless's likeness oh, yeah. in that game for yeah. sure. Yeah. Like it looks spot on. Yeah, uh, and then there's the uh, uh, Battlestar Galactica table, which upon closer inspection of all the pictures in the middle of the cast. No Starbuck. <laughs> this is how weird that there's apparently, no Starbuck. Apparently, uh, maybe Katie Sackhoff didn't want to play ball. I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, that is rather or maybe odd. She's, maybe she costs too much because she's been in The Mandalorian now with Disney+. Plus. Yeah, it's possible. So. And then uh, I don't I don't think it's Edward James Olmos' voice. It sounds like a... It sounds to me like a, a, a sound That's alike. Sound, yeah, it's definitely not... Yeah, um, it, but apparently it, he's the he's the voice of the table, from what I can tell. Yes, he's a narrator. Um, now let's just hope, let's just hope that all three of these tables have good, um, shot callouts. Um, let's use those voiceover artists and make sure they they do appropriate levels of shoot here and shoot here. Yeah, callouts. I really hope so. As always, yeah. we always hope. <laughs> yes. Um, Zen did tease out a fourth table. Um, mm. It's pretty obvious if you know what you're looking at. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm not going to voice because I 100% know what it is. Um, so I'm not going uh -huh. to say it here in case you all want to uh, play the guessing game. But it's pretty obvious if you know what you're looking at. Um Yes. So, uh, well, the one thing I did want to address with this announcement, because mm. I, I really, for Zen Original Pack, this one does hit the nostalgia sweet spot for me. So that's oh, yeah, fantastic. Definitely. I love that. But you go into the comments of the announcement video, and it's probably a 10 to 1 of people going, really? No Williams collection? Ugh, what are you guys even doing? You might as well just give it up. Mm. And well, what's the rule? You can't you can't please everybody. Can't please everybody. Right? You know, we've said it time yeah. and time again. When Zen got the Williams license, the Zen fans wanted nothing to do with the Williams tables. They were like, not those boring tables. Mm. Who wants those? I want all the Who wants those? Stuff and the... then when Zen did what was it, five packs of Williams in a row? Wasn't that mm. People were like, when are we going to get a Zen original again? Yep. So here you yeah. get this, and people are going, what? No Pinball M? <laughs> what? <laughs> no Williams? It's like, just being thankful that something interesting is coming down the pike. Uh, you know, more stuff is coming. It's not like the door has been closed on any of this. You just got to right. wait. But I mean, Mel is confirmed. There's only 12 Without. tables or something like that this year. Yeah. It's not going to be 25. Right. And, and there will absolutely be Williams coming out this year. Yes. Like he confirmed it as such on the show with us last year. So yeah. just put your patient hat on and just wait. <laughs> it's coming. And then you can complain about not having enough Zen Originals or whatever you want to do. <laughs> no, the, no, they'll complain that not enough uh, Pinball M. Um, Pinball M. Because yeah. you know, it's going to be one. Whatever one hasn't had a release... Most recently, we'll then get the uh, the where is it love? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, so, know. oh, I will say pinball M on uh, the cabinet uh, looks pretty fantastic. Um, oh, nice. Uh, again, it suffers from the same lag issue that I'm dealing with, but again, that's that's on my end, not on that's Zen's. A, that's that's, that's a, a video card. Issue. It's a hardware issue. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. But what I'm Zen, just include the back glass imagery, please. Just please. Yeah. Because I'm sick and tired. I literally spent two hours 
hunting down back glass imagery. I found somebody that had a pack. I downloaded that pack. There were certain images I didn't like or care for. They're not even the images that you guys use. Um, <laughs> it's you, You've made all the images. You have them. Just include them. Why do I mean, they we... show up on the table model right. in the middle of the game? Right. Why do we so have to go through the of... effort of finding them, downloading them, and then naming them appropriately and putting them where they need to be in the Steam file? That's ridiculous. Just, just include it's a, it. <laughs> it's a cruel and unusual punishment uh, to have to do when they are all there. Uh, like the and this this is just hall has it. Yeah, th right this there. is minimal effort like it shouldn't take you guys any effort again you already have these images just put them in the steam file where they belong mm. i would love animated back glass would love that would love it if the lights were dimming here and there that would be fantastic yeah. i understand that would take a little bit more effort and i'm hoping that you're going there but for now just include this basic thing uh, the other thing that I will say, Adam's family, what happened to the thing lights? Oh, yeah. They're gone. Mm. And you have on with the, uh, uh, the Legends 4K table, it's got the proper aspect ratio for the DMD. It's the, the 4 to 1 uh, aspect. So you've got top and bottom. There's plenty of room to include the thing lights. And use that mm -hmm. space. Yep. Get it ready for Whirlwind and all the other tables that are exactly. coming. Exactly. Because... Yep. They need them. Especially if you're not yeah, doing sure. animated back glasses. Because those yes. tables will need that animated back glass. Uh, I think of a table mm -hmm. like Dr. Dude, where it has the flipping image. Um, yes. We need that. I mean, well, I shouldn't say we need that. That really doesn't tell do anything. But, you know, if you did Bride of Pinbot, all the lights that go up and down her leg, we need those. Whirlwind, we yeah. need those. Um, yeah, anything with progressive jackpots or random awards that are displayed on the uh, back glass, that's just part of the game that yep. needs to be represented. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you're listening, Zen, because don't be lazy like Magic Pixel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. It, it comes down to it's like, uh, I'm going to have a whole host of new things that I'm like keyed up about because I have a cabinet now. <laughs> um, yes, that's right. <laughs> But, oh, something I forgot to mention about the cabinet, and I'm going to have to try and uh, uh, wrangle up this and confirm. My buddy has a, a Quest 2 uh, VR headset that he says I can borrow. But apparently, the cabinet, the At the Games Legends 4K cabinet, can be used as a controller for VR with full surround sound feedback kit working. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, you've got a pin sim right there. Yep. Wow. Okay, that's very cool. Yep. So, um, uh, I'll have to. Uh, I'll work on confirming that eventually. But that's very, very cool um, that you can do that. So, do you know, as an aside, I saw this. Um, well, I saw news that actually a friend of the show Wilbur's shared in our Discord. Apparently, um, there's a big update happening um, to Magic Pixel. Um, coming down the pipe i'd like to say it was uh this month or perhaps next month and it is i'll just go and have a check um but yeah he was saying that the magic pixel game is getting a bump um uh so big update in q2 2024 so between mm -hmm. april and june so something's cooking uh don't know what it is um but there looks like there's uh um, work being done, and also um, Wilbur's confirms that they're also addressing AMD drivers on the Steam Deck as well. So if you're a Steam Deck user, um, looks like there's a, an update potentially coming down the line for you folk as well, which is great news. Um, so yeah, I wonder what they're going to be doing. It wouldn't surprise uh, me if they're getting themselves in line with uh, the, the the At Games version of things. Um mm wouldn't surprise me at all yeah i'd hope so um but because uh, there is a difference was... you look at the tables there is a difference between uh 
between the two. PC. PC, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, with the PC, I mean, the PC looks great, but it does look a little bit dated. And the physics on the app games are phenomenal. They're great. Oh, okay. They're really, really good. Magic Pixel, the Zacharia Pinball app, they're a little floaty. They feel like like Farsight's mm. physics. But the ones on the cab do not feel like Farsight physics. They feel really tight and great. And so I wouldn't be surprised if that's the kind of thing that they've gone back and, and tweaked. And hopefully, hopefully, they tweak that god-awful UI. Oh, hopefully, yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's, yeah, that's some good news. So thanks, Wilbiz, for, for keeping an eye on that sort of thing for us. Um, yeah, it could be very nice. I mean, I want to, I want to have an excuse to play Zachary or more, mm. but I just can't find it mm -hmm. compared with some of the other titles that are out there, you know? Yep. Mm. All right. Well, uh, I guess that's enough of that. Uh, I'll be back to trying to tinker on 8-Ball Deluxe, get that wrapped up so I can start the ominous project of Firepower. Uh, oh, yeah. Hopefully, I'll eventually get that video card so then I can dive into getting... Uh, Baller installer going on the at games cabinet, and hopefully Zen fixes some things. Uh, if there's other reviews that you want me to do, uh, I couldn't resist on these <laughs> these Gottlieb ones. I just couldn't. If you want me to go through some of the uh, Gottlieb packs, um, let us know. I can go through that if that's uh, of interest to you. I know that uh, obviously all this at games talk is for a very small segment of our audience. Um, yeah, that's right. So not, I don't want to. Not uh, all the folks have it. Yeah, if if, you, if um, that doesn't interest you guys, just let me know, and I won't bother. I'll save that. Yeah, for we'll, a, we'll dial uh, it back a bit. Yeah, I'll save but, that for a know. separate non-main episode <laughs> kind of video. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, I've noticed. Uh, I've noticed as well on just as a, a final point about that game stuff. Looks like there's a, a European partner for oh. at games. Now. Excellent. So I've seen I've seen ads on I think uh, forget where I saw it. But um, there's a partner over in Europe that is, uh, I think, importing them. I like to say, I think it was Robo, uh, Robo Super Jackpot, um, friend of the show, who pointed it out to me or to this, uh, I think, the Pimple Effects community. Um, that, yeah, there, there's someone that's actually going to be importing them to Europe. But boy, uh, <laughs> there's a Europe tax on these. <laughs> uh, like, I'm, I, I thought Australia tax was bad. But I think there's an extra thousand dollars on top of mm. the cost of the game. Like it's, well, we're talking euros here. I think it's like nearly two thousand euro to get one of these. Woof. And that puts it, that puts it at the. I may as well get a local um, pinball made myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Digital pinball made myself. Because that's what so I'll say at the, at the price point, like. Full MSRP, I think it's fifteen hundred bucks. But then, if you want the surround sound feedback kit, full F, full MSRP, you and delivery cost, you're basically at two thousand dollars now. Uh, I mean, that's US. The, that's US. Yeah. Um, and that's really yeah. pushing the boundaries between the tipping point between. Do I go with this or do I just go with a full Virtua Cab that is mm. much bigger, has more bells and whistles, um, and is going to play all of VPX. Uh, yeah. So there, and there's self-contained as well. So yeah. it has the hardware built into it. Yeah. I think the from memory, and this was a, this announcement was made a while ago. I think the 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 SKU that they're shipping to Europe will actually have the surround sound kit built into it. I hope so. As part of the the standard offering, which is probably reflecting of the price, given that it's two uh, two thousand US mm -hmm. with all that stuff fitted. Mm -hmm. So the two thousand four hundred euro with all importation costs and all that sort of overhead that the importer needs to add on is, you know, you can see it. You yeah. can see where the money's going. Um, but, I mean, if, if they even consider importing down to Oceania and, you know, New Zealand, Australia, that thing is going to be three grand Yeah, Australian. And that's a, that no, I can get a, a virtual cabinet down here with a PC in it for about four and a half, albeit not a great PC, but I can still get one. Yeah. So that's like a mm -mm, no. Yeah. Like I said, it's a, it's a great entry level. I have no doubt about that. Um, it, it gives you the bug. It gives I, you the bug, hundred um, yeah. percent. And I, I like scratching that itch. Uh, mm -hmm. 
but once you get I to mean, a certain honestly, price point, v- then you control. might as well start paying and getting the good stuff. Um, having it as a VR controller is attractive. It is. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, nope. I'm, yeah. I'm, like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna be borrowing that uh, that Quest Two and seeing how well it works. Um, I just my Quest Two is sitting there on charge, getting updates, just waiting for the end of the year, <laughs> allegedly for the VR package. Drop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm ready. I'm absolutely ready for it. Uh, bring it on. Yep. Okay. Well, that's all we got for you uh, this week. Next week. Jared, what are we talking about? Stuff and things. Till then, folks. Bye-bye. See you later, everyone.